from a judge this week. Brian Pritchard, he was the first vice chairman of the Georgia Republican Party, was ordered to pay a $5,000 fine as well as investigative costs, and he was publicly reprimanded. Pritchard had been sentenced in 1996 in Pennsylvania to three years probation for felony check forgery charges. His probation was revoked three times, once in 1999 after he moved to Georgia and again in 2002 four, and four. And in 2004, a judge imposed a new seven-year probationary pit, uh, period onto Pritchard, and that made him ineligible to vote until at least 2011 in Georgia, where state law prohibits felons from voting. Justice Clarence Thomas, you remember him, he's been under a lot of heat this year and most of the last couple of years. Well, he gave Crystal Clanton a home and a job. Now, this is after she left a conservative youth organization amidst widespread controversy. Justice Clarence picked her for one of the most coveted positions in the legal world, and that is a clerk on the U.S. Supreme Court. His decision to make Crystal Clanton, who's basically his adopted daughter, his clerk, is uh, yet another example of Clarence landing himself in public controversy. Uh, this Crystal Clanton is also his wife's former employee and, as I said, virtually a family member. She's known outside of the justices' circle for allegations that she sent anti-Black text messages, uh, including one that read, I hate Black people. Now, despite sending that kind of racist text, she has been welcomed into Clarence Thomas's home, uh, travels frequently with his wife, and now has one of the most coveted jobs in the legal profession as a Supreme Court clerk. Justice Juan Merchant, who is overseeing Trump's upcoming hush money trial in Manhattan, made it crystal clear this week that he's having none of Trump's shenanigans. After firing a new warning shot across the Trump team's bow, Merchant imposed a gag order on the former president, barring him from attacking any witnesses, jurors, or prosecutors in this case. Now, under this order, Trump cannot make or direct others to make statements about witnesses' role in the case. He is also barred from commenting on prosecutors, court staff, and their relatives. That you know, he intend, he's also basically barred from doing anything to interfere with the work of this case or any of the jurors. A former president of the United States has to be given a warning not to intimidate jurors, clerks, and staff in our court system. And on today, both former presidents, uh, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, have suspended their active retirements to try to provide a political uh, favor to the campaign of their successor, Joe Biden. Uh, the two ex-presidents are going to appear with Joe Biden in this rare and highly anticipated gathering of three Democratic presidents. This is happening tonight in New York City. They are expected to raise over $25 million for the Biden and Harris re-election campaign, and they are expected to galvanize the Democratic base because, after all, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton are two of the most beloved Democratic presidents in all of history. This is Ariva Martin in Real Time, and I'm your host, Ariva Martin. This is your one-stop destination for today's trending news, expert analysis, and my unfiltered opinions. I'm going to be breaking down today's trending news uh, with two of my uh, favorite contributors. And also we're gonna be talking about in hour two, you know, that hour where we go deep, where we uh, dig behind the headlines in hour two, we're gonna be talking about dating with two of my favorite dating experts, uh, Dr. Diane Stewart and Dr. Ish Major. And we're talking about dating because uh, there's an article out that uh, highlights the really complicated uh, set of circumstances that many young people, particularly African-American uh, women and men, find themselves in as they seek to find a mate and to start families. A recent article out uh, on NBC.com says that despite making tremendous gains in education and in the professional world, many women still look for men 
to be the traditional uh, kind of breadwinner uh, in a relationship to pay for dates and to take the lead in courting. Uh, this article goes on to say that uh, nice guys who sometimes get a bad reputation are perhaps back in vogue. So I'll be talking to Dr. Stewart and Dr. Major about uh, their opinions on this article in terms of what the dating world holds for young men and women, as well as those who may be seeking uh, to date after a divorce or later in life, more mature couples. Uh, there's lots of news all the time about dating apps and, and how difficult it is, particularly for Black women, to find suitable Black men to marry. I'm uh, going to get into what might be holding some of these women back and what are some of the issues that Black women in particular need to be concerned about as they seek to not only have successful careers, but to start families and to perhaps many of them get married or have partners. So make sure you stick around for hour two. Uh, but before I bring on my guests, I want to shout out uh, the governor of Michigan. You know, we always talk about the things we don't like that politicians do. Uh, sometimes they do things that we actually like. And Governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, recently signed into law a bill that I think is so critically important. Uh, and it's a bill that uh, comes nearly two years after it was exposed in the media, uh, basically an educational crisis that had forced vulnerable teens in the state of Michigan to repeat classes they took while living in state-funded residential facilities. And because they were forced to retake courses they had already taken, uh, it delayed graduation for some of these uh, students, and in many cases caused some of these students to actually drop out of high school. So rather than uh, you know allow this to happen on her watch as governor of the state of Michigan, uh, Gretchen Whitman, uh, Whitmer signed into law uh, and for the first time in the state of Michigan, the state and the educational department is required to provide children in residential facilities. Most of these children are in foster care. Uh, the state now has to provide them with an education that prioritizes meeting the graduation requirements to earn a diploma. Uh, until now, the state had placed children in these facilities without providing appropriate educational services and as a result, many of these uh, children were left behind. They didn't receive the education they deserve, that they need to go out into the world and to be successful, to either go on to college or to get jobs. Um, you know, just a, a myriad of things were happening in some of these foster care facilities from uh, kids' transcripts not being uh, located or identified, not being transferred perhaps as they moved from one facility to the next. Uh, again, kids uh, not being able to prove that they had taken certain classes and being forced to take those classes again. Uh, so again, uh, you know, kudos to Gretchen Whitmer for recognizing that our kids are, you know, they are the next generation of leaders in this country. And we have an obligation, all of us do, particularly those in elected office, to make sure that our educational system is working for everyone, not just the wealthy, not just those kids who live in traditional two-parent homes, but education is a right in this country. It's a right that should be afforded to everyone, uh, despite whether you live in a residential facility, whether you are in foster care, whether you are uh, in the custody of the state. And, and California has done something very similar as it relates to individuals who have disabilities. So if you are a high school student in the state of California and you have an IEP because you may need special education services, School districts in the state of California now are required to figure out a way to ensure that as many kids that have special education needs earn a diploma, even if it means uh, alternative ways uh, than what, say, kids who don't have special education are doing to get their diploma. And, and these states are recognizing, California, Michigan, that and others, that having a diploma is just the basic way in which our kids are you know, able to get jobs, to become employed, to support themselves, to take care of themselves. So uh, again, any state that's doing anything to lift up kids in crises, whether you're kids and kids who have special needs, kids in foster care, kids in general, we should all be looking for ways to make sure that we have an educated uh, workforce and that our students are getting the best in what we have to offer as a country. 
uh, from our educational system. When we come forward, more of today's breaking and trending news right here on KBLA Talk 1580. Stay with us. At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so we decided to sing about it. When you're rolling Charmin, don't you stop on the party. Nice. This is more, so roll it back, everybody. Right Charmin's in the system is off, and having nice. The crib is always stocked, it's our party vibe. Yeah. It's Sherman Ultra Soft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Sherman. Environmental justice is racial justice. Environmental justice is social justice. This is KBLA Talk 1580. Are you wet shaven? You'll get razor bumps. Nah, Pop, I'm good with Gillette Skin Guard. How long you been growing that beard? Mama hates anyway. <laughs> Since 77, I shaved and got ingrown so bad. That's why I use the Gillette Skin Guard Razor, Face Scrub, Shave Gel, and Moisturizer. So I don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation. Gillette Skin Guard, huh? <laughs> Your mama's going to love this one. <laughs> <laughs> the best a man can get keeps getting better with Gillette Skin Guard. Bye now. We are back and my good friend Marvin Penn Darvis is joining us now. Marvin is not just any old lawyer. He happens to be an elected official in South show. Carolina. So I'm super excited that he's joining me. Uh, he is joining me on uh, the phone today because he has to drive back to the Capitol in South Carolina. So Marvin, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know, uh, you know your legislative business, of course, has to come first. But I really want to talk to you today about this Clarence Thomas story. You're a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. We know how coveted the jobs are to become a clerk with the U.S. Supreme Court. I mean, there could not be a, a bigger prize uh, in the legal field than getting one of those jobs. And there are not very many of them because there are only nine justices and clerks didn't tend to stay with the justice for a significant number of years. So here's this woman, Crystal Clanton who Justice Cl Clarence Thomas and his wife have virtually adopted as their daughter. She's living with them. She used to work for Thomas's wife. Uh, she goes on trips with her. Uh, they call her virtually a family member. They encourage her to go back to law school. She gets a degree. And I'm not a law school snob, but it's not a degree from a law school where you typically would find someone having, uh, again, an opportunity to work as a clerk with the U.S. Supreme Court. And more than that, the woman has a history, and it's not that long ago, she's not that old, 
of sending racist text messages, which is how she left her last place of employment. And one of the messages says, I hate black people. What is going on with Clarence Thomas? Like, does he hate himself so much and us as black people that he would adopt someone uh, virtually uh, who makes that kind of comment? And then he says he's shielding her from us, the liberal elites and liberal mob. And that's why he gave her this coveted position. What do you make of this story? Well, first off, Ariva, I want to thank you for allowing me to be with you as always. Sorry I couldn't be there with you as far as being on camera, but thank you for allowing me to do it this way. You know, Clarence Thomas is going through an identity crisis, um, and I think he's been dealing with that for quite some time. Um, the fact that he would have, as a Black man in, in 2024, um, allow someone um, to to be on his staff and then someone to be that he's been basically uh, kind of taken over and, and, and shepherding through to, to be able to make those kinds of comments. I don't like black people. Um, that says a lot about who he is, um, what he tolerates and, and what he allows on his watch. And um, the, it would be negligent for me to sit here and tell you I'm surprised because I'm not. Um, Clarence Thomas has shown us time and time again who he is, what he represents, and what he cares about. And yeah. it, and it's unfortunate that he's the kind of person that has a lifetime appointment. You know, it, it's not enough that you know he's got all these financial entanglements. He's taking trips, oh, tell me about it. Uh, going on yachts, you know, taking private jets. But now this really demeans that position as. Supreme Court clerk, there are people who spend their whole lives trying to get those jobs. I mean, doing yeah. everything right, you know, getting straight A's, working around the clock, writing briefs, uh, you know, joining their, their law review or trying out for law review. I mean, you and I know how difficult it is to even be considered for a Supreme Court clerkship. And he just hands it, literally hands it to this woman who, again, you know, if she had to compete in a fair market you know, competitive process, you know, it's pretty clear. She wouldn't even make like the runners up round. She wouldn't even be in the running for this job just based on her pedigree. I'm sorry, because that's how they choose who gets those jobs. It, it, it is unfortunate, Ariva. And what I will tell you is that a Supreme Court clerkship is probably one of the most prestigious, if not the most prestigious clerkship that you can get in a legal profession. And it's extremely competitive. Um, oftentimes, you've got a lot of Ivy League students that are competing for these clerkships. Um, and so it says a lot about you um, if you are able to obtain one. And to be able to see a uh, Supreme Court justice give it away uh, to, you know, just brazenly to win, um, it, it's unfortunate, you know. I, and I think what really concerns me, Marvin, she's going to be doing research and writing a memos to him on cases that involve race. And she's already told us how she feels about black people. She hates black people. So here is a woman who is outwardly racist, yet she's going to be making decisions. Can you imagine her on the affirmative action case? Or, you know, we know. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, she's the kind of person that you would honestly think that there's got to be automatic recusals or you would think so on, on so many of these other key cases that that are going to affect black and brown people. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, I think by the sheer nature of her statements that she's automatically has to be excluded uh, from from even being considered because you and I both know as lawyers that these are the clerk, you know, these clerks are the ones that draft the opinions, right? I mean, they're, they're the ones that are crafting the opinions for the justices to look at. I'm We're having a little technical difficulty with uh, Marvin's audio. Uh, we are talking about this just horrific story, as I would call it, horrific, of Clarence Thomas, yet again, uh, define, you know, the expectations, the norms, the customs, the traditions of the U.S. Supreme Court, basically giving a woman that's like his daughter, someone who's like a family member, 
who didn't graduate from an Ivy League school, who doesn't have the pedigree of 99.9% .9 of all Supreme Court justices, uh, the clerks of all Supreme Court justices, giving her an opportunity to serve as a clerk, most prestigious, most coveted job in the legal profession. Uh, just unbelievable. Uh, you know, talking about judges. So you can juxtapose someone like Clarence Thomas against this judge sitting in a state court in Manhattan. Uh, let's talk about Juan Merchant, uh, Marvin. He's overseeing Trump's upcoming hush money trial in Manhattan, and he's already made it clear, don't come in here, Donald Trump, with your shenanigans. He's already issued a gag order. He's already said, don't come in here talking about my clerks, my staff, the jurors, and don't direct anyone else to do that. Can Do you imagine that Donald Trump will be able to abide by this gag order and follow the instructions of this judge? And if he doesn't, what do you think the consequences will be? Um, I don't think he'll be able to abide by the gag order. I think you and I both know that, right? I, I think if there's anything we know about the former president is that he's going to say what he wants and, and, and say when he wants to say it when he wants to say it. Um, but I do appreciate um, um, this gentleman coming up and saying that this not this isn't going to be tolerated here and, and, and we're not going to play these games. Um, and then this is going to be a serious ordeal. And so as far as the consequences and, and what happens if he, he violates that gag order, um, I think that they're going to be I think he's going to send a message. And I think a lot of it that that message is going to be one uh, when we're talking about, um, you know, what kind of penalties exist when, when, when you violate certain orders of the court. Or whether that be civil fines. Um, I mean, again, we know that that um, that President Trump has been a subject to many of them. Uh, but um, I would imagine that that's something that's going to be on the table and just making sure that they send a message, a strong message um, in, in one that's going to try to gain compliance, but also send the message that this isn't going to be tolerated here. And, and that's what I think is going to ultimately happen. Yeah, we're going to be watching that trial very closely. Uh, I got to ask you, Marvin, about South Carolina, your home oh. state. This court ruling that, you know, th this unconstitutional map can be used in this year's election, even though it's been determined that 30,000 black voters uh, were exiled from a district to make it safer for the white GOP incumbent representative Nancy Mace. What do you make of that? I am very disappointed um, in the decision um, of, the, of the court um, as far as using the current maps uh, to go forward for this election. Um, just to give you a little background, there was a petition um, from the NAACP and in a number of civil rights groups uh, to basically encourage or, or to get the court to consider um, holding off, you know, make, well, obviously they wanted to make a decision, but, but really making a decision that was going to be one that was going to be more advantageous to, to really striking out these maps. We know these maps are not good maps. And we know these maps are based off of um, lines that that take into account the fact that they've tried to pack the first congressional district uh, with a lot of these previous, you know, these Republican precincts from the con six congressional districts, which is a primarily and heavily Democratic district. And, and so it's made the Democratic district more Democrat and, and they made the Republican district more Republican. And it, it's really ho hurt voters' chances and, and opportunities in the process. And so I'm, I'm not pleased about the court decision today. I'm, I'm not surprised, but but uh, it's it's one that we've been monitoring. In fact, uh, it came up in our caucus meeting yesterday uh, when we were in the in the Capitol, just talking about things that are going to impact this coming election season and this election cycle, and, and seeing how that decision is going to have a, a significant impact. So it's unfortunate. Yeah, when we come forward, I want to continue talking about this decision, literally an unconstitutional map being used that will support a white GOP candidate in South Carolina. Uh, stay with us. More breaking and trending news right here on KBLA Talk 1580. It's the right time. More of Ariva Martin in real time when we come forward. forward. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. 
Two journalists who were reportedly attacked by Minnesota State Patrol troopers in 2020 have decided to settle their lawsuit against the state. The Los Angeles Time announced that the two journalists have agreed to a $1.2 million settlement. The two women were covering the response to George Floyd's murder when troops reportedly backed them against a wall and began firing pepper spray and other projectiles at them. $1 million of the settlement will go to legal fees while the journalists will split the remaining $200,000. Memphis Mayor Paul Young met with U.S. Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty this week to talk about the city's crime. Young, who is black, says they discussed issues including the jail and the need for a crime lab. It comes as Young recently announced his Black Mayors Coalition on Crime Initiative, where he's meeting with more than 20 black mayors from across the country. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. Delays continue to run heavy through Montrose's 210 West before Highway 2 as an accident remains in the center divide with a 25-minute delay and back of running heavy from Mountain, Saco Street Interchange. In Southgate on the 710 South after Imperial Highway, stalls being cleared from lanes with a 35-minute traffic jam and recovery from Caesar E. Chavez Avenue. Lamart Park, drive carefully in Crenshaw Boulevard southbound at West 39th Street as a crash involving a bus is in the intersection. Emergency crews are currently on scene and traffic is starting to get busy and heavy from Wilshire Boulevard. You don't need a cape or special powers to be a superhero because every time you walk through the gates at the San Diego Zoo, you help fund conservation efforts around the globe. And that makes you a hero for wildlife everywhere. San Diego Zoo. Every visit goes a long way. Is this, the kind of- this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a bad man. North Carolina's Hubert Davis is one of three black head coaches who have their teams in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. North Carolina, the top seed in the West Regional, plays Alabama tonight at Crypto.com in the West Regional semifinals. The other two black head coaches still on the board in the tournament, Kevin Keats at North Carolina State and Shaka Smart at Marquette. NC State and Marquette face each other Friday at 4 p.m. in a South Regional semifinal in Dallas. LeBron's triple-double Wednesday night at Memphis was the 140th in his career. 111 of those have come in the regular season. The NFL is cutting into the NBA's territory on Christmas Day. Christmas falls on a Wednesday this year, but the NFL is scheduling two games on the holiday. The NBA had Christmas on lock with five games all day. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. If you're not following KBLA Talk 1580 on all of our socials, then you're missing out. Download our app and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on the web at KBLA 1580. That's right. Again, you can find all of our socials at KBLA 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. By the way, if you miss any of our weekday shows in real time, you can always catch up by checking out the podcast of your favorite shows at your leisure. At KBLA Talk 1580, we've got your black. Got your black. Follow the leader. Oh, my God. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. When you're young, life is full of choices. Don't let opioids like highly addictive and deadly fentanyl take away your life with just one wrong pill. Addiction is a disease that can affect anyone at any age. But there is a choice to get help for this disease. Find medically proven treatment options, including virtual, at choosemat.org. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Stay Housed LA has the resources you need to know your rights and the legal support to back them up. The COVID-19 pandemic has cost people their jobs and livelihoods. This has left an estimated one-third of households not being able to make rent and facing losing their homes. This is a fear no one in our community should have to face. You have rights, though, and Stay Housed LA is here to help. Stay Housed LA is a partnership between the County of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles, and local community and legal service providers. Together, they provide tenants with the information and support needed to exercise their rights so they can remain safely in their homes. Find out more about your rights by participating in a virtual tenant workshop. Get the legal assistance you need. 
Find additional resources in Los Angeles County and the city of Los Angeles. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA County for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. That's stayhousedla.org. Or call their hotline at 213-694-0040. We've got your black with a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. As we go a little something like this. this hey, it is B.D.L. Hugo, and I am thrilled to be heard weekdays in my hometown on KBLA Talk 1580. So check out the D.L. Hugo Afternoon Show weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. exclusively on KBLA Talk 1580. We got a whole lot to talk about. Let me tell you. That's what we're real. Back and we are breaking down today's trending and breaking news. And my good friend Calvin John Smiley has joined us. And in hour two, Dr. Diane Stewart and Dr. Ish Major from Marriage Bootcamp are going to join me as we talk about dating in the 2000s and particularly the difficulties that many Black women face as they try to uh, have serious relationships, many thinking about marriage and having kids. There are some social media influencers, dating coaches out there giving some advice that Dr. Ish and Dr. Stewart say is harmful uh, and definitely not going to help women, particularly black women, uh, accomplish their goals if their goals are getting married and having a family. So make sure you stick around for hour two. Dr. Smiley, thank you uh, for joining me today. Uh, you're in New York and something really big is happening in New York right now as we speak. And that is three Democratic presidents are together on one stage, Biden, Clinton, and Obama. And not only is this historic, I mean, that you have three living presidents coming together, uh, but they're coming together for a singular cause. And that cause is to support the uh, candidacy of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and to raise a ton of money, 25 million is what they're expecting to raise what difference do you think it's going to make in terms of those voters that may be a little hesitant about Biden to see that he has the full support of two of Democrats, probably most favorite presidents, Obama and Clinton, but not just their support in words, but their support in deeds? Yeah. So thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I was thinking about it today with my commutes and riding the trains and everything like that. But, you know, it's kind of, you know, coming uh, they, they put the all-star team together. And so I think it can certainly uh, be helpful to show that kind of uh, that force and, and that unity. I think that's one of the things that the Democrats are uh, trying to highlight here is that you have unity in the party and that we're, we're closing ranks around Joe Biden and uh, Kamala as the uh, the DNC incumbent president and vice president. Uh, and And so, you know, I hope that it helps. You know, on the flip side, I could see people on Twitter saying, yeah, Joe Biden needs all the help he can get. And so they could try to um, be defactors or, 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 or defecting um, this type of uh, solidarity. But, you know, I think in a place like New York, if you're trying to raise 25 million, uh, they've come to the right place uh, to do such a thing. Yeah, probably only in New York and L.A., uh, Marvin, what do you think? So uh, Dr. Smiley is saying, well, people may be saying, well, that just shows how damaged or how, you know, difficult the road is for Biden, which is why he's got to pull out the big guns. Are, are you thinking in South Carolina that's how people will perceive this coming together? I think it's a little different in South Carolina. You know, I, I'm from here. I've been on the ground here. Um, obviously, I was here in, in 2020 when he ran and, and campaigned originally. There's a, a huge affinity for, for Biden here in South Carolina. He's got a lot of roots here and a lot of ties here from elected officials um, that, that have been here, been in serving for some time. And, and just I think he vacations here quite frequently on Kiowa. And so South Carolinians just have a certain affinity for, for the president. And um, they, they honestly, you know, especially with the relationship that he has with Congressman Clyburn, and, and what he brings to the table. Um, there are a lot of South Carolinians that just support the president and, and, and are generally going to do so um, uh, unless there's some real reason uh, 
to, to jump off board. But um, he's got a lot of support here, and I, I don't see that waning in any way. Yeah, let's talk about what happened yesterday, uh, Dr. Smiley. Nicole Shanahan, this uh, 38-year-old tech lawyer who uh, has a lot of money, big fat bank account. Some say she's a multimillionaire, others say a billionaire. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy chose her for his VP candidate very early on. Typically, you know, candidates don't choose VPs that early, but he needed money primarily. Uh, but I, I had a strategist, Democratic strategist on yesterday, good friend of mine, Richard. Richard thought, oh my God, Nicole was gonna be a game changer. He says she's beautiful, she's dynamic, she's progressive, she's hip. And that women in particular and young people, millennials are gonna really gravitate to her uh, and that she was going to be a big threat to Joe Biden's campaign. Now, of course, I did not see that. And Richard and I often disagree. What did you make when you saw Kennedy's announcement of Nicole uh, Shanahan? And, and, you know, what do you think she'll do to his can his ticket, the, the ticket, this third party ticket that uh, Kennedy is running on? You know, whenever I hear Kennedy's name brought up now, I, I can't help but laugh because I the fact that he's still in the race to me is is kind of ridiculous, right? This guy has spouted out uh, some really ridiculous uh, uh, nonsense, particularly around public health and science. So I don't know if anybody's really taking him serious. To that end, he does have the last name Kennedy, and he is bringing on, uh, as you as you pointed out, a, a very young and uh, a wealthy woman. So could this pull some votes away from? Um, Republican and Democrat alike. Uh, certainly, I don't think it's going to make any type of splash. Uh, maybe a far off ripple in the corner of the pool that no one's paying attention to. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't see this shaking up any um, election season um, right now. You know, I think we're full steam ahead of Joe Biden, John, Donald Trump, and let the unfortunate messiness, you know, commence with that we'll, we'll see certainly coming out of Donald Trump's mouth and how Donald, uh, excuse me, and how Joe Biden um, either plays defense with that or uh, decides himself to go on the offense, similar to what he did at the State of the Union, not backing down from uh, Republicans in, in the chamber. So, yeah, I don't know. Kennedy, uh, you know, is he more than just Twitter laughs at this point? Like, you know, uh, yeah, you know, this woman is wealthy, no doubt about it, but the amount of money you need to launch a national political campaign, particularly for the president, is so enormous. I mean, literally, uh, they're talking about raising upward of $5 billion uh, and spending probably more on the presidency, just uh, Joe Biden's candidacy. Uh, we know Katzenberg... Uh, the you know big time Hollywood director, he said he's going to raise no less than one billion dollars. And from what I'm hearing of here in California in particular, that literally people are writing the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars like it's ten dollars, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar checks, you know, like it's nothing. Uh, and you need that to get on the airways. Unfortunately, that's the state of our politics in this moment. Uh, what are you thinking, Marvin, about this? 38 year old, you think she galvanizes voters, women voters, progressives, hipsters? I don't know. You know, I think this country is so over these so called entrepreneurs, Vivek Ramaswamy, Donald Trump, people who've never been in office who think they're going to use some kind of business, you know, technique or skills to run the country, the United States. It just has been a failed experiment. Uh, what are your thoughts, Marvin? I think um, I think people are over it, but I also think people we have to we have to understand one thing, Ariva. We have to understand that there's a reason why Donald Trump got elected to begin with. Um, there's a reason why he's still popular, and the reason why I'm speaking that is because I speak to my colleagues in South Carolina every day uh, who support him, um, and as unfortunate as it is, there's this idea that they want people who are real world people who share similar experiences as them uh, to be representative of them. I'm over it just like you are. And, and I think it's ridiculous. I think it's a ploy, um, but unfortunately, these are the people that seem to be getting traction in a lot of circles, especially in GOP circles. 
and and it worries me. And I think we have to be vigilant and and, and really be paying attention um, for the implications of that going forward. Yeah, no, it worries, I think, all of us. Uh, and clearly, Kennedy's campaign, as you said, Dr. Smiley, probably was dead. Uh, and he needed a lifeline. And he needed a lifeline that had some money because he can't raise money the traditional way. People know that a third party candidate has no chance of winning. So people aren't going to just take their money and sink it into that campaign. So he needed someone who's willing to spend their own money. And to spend money, you have to have money. So you know, let's give him credit for going out, finding someone. And, and this woman must have a big ego and figure this is an opportunity for her to get some kind of national platform. But she'll never be accepted in a dim party because we don't like folks that, you know, create havoc in our politics. And I, according to what I've read about it, she's way too liberal to be a Republican. So I don't know where these people go after they, you know, spend millions of dollars uh, in trying to make their way into the national, uh, you know, kind of conversation. Uh, but hey, it's her money, spend it however she chooses to. Uh, what we come for, we're going to talk about the House in disarray, Speaker wanting to give aid to Ukraine, but still wanting to impeach the Homeland Security Secretary, although Republicans in the Senate say, let it go. Stay with us, KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> You're listening to Ariva Martin in real time on KBLA Talk 1580. In the heart of California, where innovation thrives, access to high-speed internet is important to every family and business. Cal Broadband is the state's leading expert in the development and deployment of broadband infrastructure. Each day, we work to help advance the right policies that will expand the opportunities of reliable high-speed internet to every community in our golden state. Cal Broadband is working hard to connect California. Visit calbroadband.org for more information. That's calbroadband.org. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. Yeah. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Taxes and fees apply. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick. Sorry, kids. <laughs> yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. This is KBLA Talk 1580, home of the 2024 Climate Justice Campaign. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment through the arts. Thea Chucha Central Cultural is on a mission to transform community in the Northeast San Fernando Valley and beyond through ancestral knowledge, the arts, literacy, and creative engagement. The Northeast San Fernando Valley has a population of about 500,000, the size of the city of Oakland, yet it has no bookstores, art galleries, or full-fledged cultural spaces until Tia Chuchas opened its doors in 2001. Founded by renowned poet and activist Luis Rodriguez, Tia Chuchas Cultural Center provides a year-round free or low-cost arts and literacy bilingual intergenerational programming in mural painting, music, dance, writing, visual arts, healing art sessions, and healing talking circles. Activities also include Mexica, Aztec dance, indigenous cosmology, philosophy, and two weekly open mic nights, one in Spanish, the other in English. In addition, they host author readings, film screenings, and art exhibits. To express yourself, heal yourself, attend an event, or volunteer, please visit www.tiachucha.org. That's T-I-A-C-H-U-C-H-A dot org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580.
We are back and John Calvin Smiley is joining us and Marvin Pendarvis. Uh, you know, I want, we're going to talk about the impeachment of the Homeland Security Secretary, but on the break, I was looking at a, a new story that's out in the, uh, it's the Washington Post about mail-in voting. So Dr. Smiley, Republicans for years were proponents of mail-in voting. And then Donald Trump, who took over the party, essentially went on this rampage and this you know, campaign against mail-in voting, saying it's fraudulent that, I don't know, male men or male women who touch the ballot somehow you know, pull it out and change the vote from Donald Trump to Joe Biden. He has all these ridiculous theories. So now that the Trump team is a little bit more sophisticated than they were before, they are on a campaign to cause white, older Republican voters to mail in their ballots in advance because they know that mail-in voting is important, particularly in swing states. But they got this problem. They got this guy, i.e. their candidate, that keeps telling its voters that mail-in voting is fraudulent, people shouldn't use it. And but, you know, quietly, the RNC and Trump supporters are encouraging voters to vote using mail-in voting. What a mess this is going to be when he loses. He's going to, of course, blame the people for using the ballot box for, you know, putting their, their votes in the mail. And you have this party that's willing to support this man that his, his intellect seems like so tiny. They're trying to explain to him how mail-in voting isn't fraudulent, that it's been used for decades. It's the way Republicans have won elections for years. But his little small brain can't comprehend that. It, it just really... It's so galling when you think about someone like that being the president that just traffics in, in these conspiracy theories and causes so much confusion amongst people. It's really hard to imagine on some days. Yeah, he's certainly a president or just a, a figure that always lives by the motto of heads I win, tails you lose, because it wasn't simply the mail-in votes, but he also was mad at the machines in, in, in key states like Pennsylvania where he was, you know, screaming that even the machines where people went in person to vote uh, uh, didn't work properly. So, you know, he's certainly going to 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 shoot the deer that he sees, and the mail-in voting certainly became uh, something that he could uh, hone in on because you know people can relate to packages being stolen, right? Your your Amazon package going missing, and so you know it's something that people go, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe there is a maybe there is some fraud here, even though. There was no wide scale uh, turnout that fraud was actually occurring, but it was something that he could certainly uh, um, pin his his narrative to. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, I think we we need to recognize that not only is he, you know, a tyrant, but, you know, he himself is treated like the grandpa that so many Republicans want to claim that Joe Biden is treated like, right? That Joe Biden is the old man in the room. Well, so is Trump, right? Not only statistically in, in his actual age, but, you know, like you said, Ariva, you have the Republican RNC doing one thing or, or, you know, GOP doing one thing and then, you know, telling him, oh, yeah, yeah, you could do that too, Grandpa. So, you know, it's, I think that's just part of the, uh, the way in which, in which it's, it's, it's operating right now, right? He's also the kind of the old man on the hill who they're like, yeah, Grandpa, say your, your oh, wacky oh. stuff. It's so bad. This article literally says that these you know, political operatives that know that mail-in voting is safe are saying things like, oh, he'll get there. I, I, you, know, you don't want to call Trump voters dumb because obviously 70 million people are not dumb. But remember, when you read articles like this and you have a person running for the president of the United States and you're trying to reason with them about something as simple as the postal system that has been in this country for decades that we've relied upon that everybody no matter what your party democratic republican uses just what does it say though about the trump voter that they would be willing to put this man back in office when his logic i mean he just seems to be void of I mean, I don't, he went to college, I guess, but he just seems kind of stupid. I don't, I'm, I'm just struggling for words because I don't want to be dismissive and demeaning of his voters, but it, it just really is puzzling. It's puzzling to me, too. And truth be told, I'm struggling to find words for it myself. What I'll tell you, Reva, is that the assault that we're seeing in 
the attack on memory voting is no different than the suppression efforts of, of that they've um, used historically uh, to cut off access to the ballot for African Americans and many marginalized groups. And so this is just a reincarnation of those efforts historically. Um, the truth be told is that the president is upset or Donald Trump is upset because in 2020, um, he thought that he had a significant lead going into election night. And the reality is those mail-in ballots were the reason, well, it, were, it played a contributing part into the reason why his lead waned and he ultimately lost. And so he automatically just throws out this idea that there's some corruption, um, that there's some conspiracy, uh, that, that, that there's some undue influence that's happened. But if he cuts off mail-in ballots, that's who's one of the primary benefactors for mail-in ballots. Our military voters, those who are overseas. Is he going to say that those votes don't yeah. matter? I mean, I mean, those, those, I mean, we, they are. We deal with it every year where military voters are able to vote. And so, again, it just shows that this is big. This is a, a gripe. Um, this, this is him thinking that this is going to allow him to, to, to coast into the presidency um, in 2024. The reality is, um, I think the voters are smarter than that. And I have the utmost faith in the voters this time. And, and you know, I, I think, Professor Smiley, we are quick to normalize or to dismiss Trump's conduct as you know, being a, a gripe or being a conspiracy. But when you read this article, articles like this in the Washington Post, it is really revealing a man whose mind, who, I mean, his brain, he's not like, he's not thinking like a rational, logical person. And some of the statements are really bizarre, which, you know, again, you, you and a great point about we're so used to calling Joe Biden and worrying about him dying and, you know, making a mistake or, you know, mispronouncing a name or confusing someone. But Donald Trump, I don't know if it's age. I don't know if it's, it's, I, I, it just doesn't seem like this man is fit to run anything, let's know in the country, but yet people are willing to give him a pass. And I'm just thinking if Joe Biden made any of these statements about voting and the postal service, uh, you know, they would be disqualifying for a Democrat. So, so what's happening in our body, body politic that a Republican, i.e. a Donald Trump can get away with these kinds of just like, you know, bizarre comments and be praised in some circles for them. But yet a Democrat would be, I mean, Joe Biden would be, I mean, the press would just have a field day if he made statements even remotely close to these statements. Donald Trump's a train wreck and people like to watch train train wrecks. I mean, you know, I, I, I think back to his four years as president and, you know, there wasn't a week that went by where it wasn't a controversy. It wasn't a, a Twitter scandal. It wasn't someone who was leaving his cabinet and claimed they had the tapes, you know, of something he said or something he, he had done. And after a while, you have to start to think to yourself, you know, how much of this is, you know, outside influence versus, you know, the, the machine itself, you know, pulling these strings because he becomes entertainment. So you have a, a, a swath of people who want to just continue watching the next season. You have some people who are, you know, single issue voters. So it doesn't matter what Donald Trump says about X, Y, and Z. The, you know, he's going to do things on reproductive justice that, you know, that they think Democrats are going to, you know, not do, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, he, he's won over that. He clearly beat up the more status quo GOP candidates. I mean, we look back at how quickly he was able to get Jeb Bush out of there. I mean, a Bush in America to be kind of ousted in that primary in the way that he did. And so the, the, the party got behind him. So it did add some legitimacy to his, to his uh, rants and his ramblings. And so I think, you know, where we are now, which I think is the, the, the bigger issue, is that even if Donald Trump steps aside, drops dead, goes away, evaporates like Thanos made all of the other people, Trumpism is here. 
And I think that's the real issue mm. that we have to deal with is that there are people within the Republican Party and Americans who absolutely believe in everything he said ideologically. Whereas I don't actually even know if Donald Trump believes half the stuff that he says. That's right. right. Because he clearly just says stuff to, to say it. But there are absolutely people who do. And I think that's the deeper and more long term um, fight that, that the Democrats in this country is in for is how do we now undo the mess and the ideology yeah. that has always kind of been there. But, you know, for the last 50 years, it was kind of shame that you wouldn't be this kind of nasty uh, uh, politician. Right. Yeah. Uh, great point. Uh, we are out of time. Thank you so much, Marvin. Thank you so much, John. Always a pleasure to be in conversation with both of you. Uh, stay with pleasure. us. We're going to be talking about dating in 2024 and the challenges that Black women and Black men face. Stick around. KBLA Talk 1580. Thank you guys for jumping in. Thank you.